Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY23 results conference call of Berger Paints India Limited, hosted by MK Global Financial Services. We have with us today Mr. Abhijit Roy, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Kaushik Ghosh, Vice President and CFO, and Mr. Sujyoti Mukherjee, Vice President, Finance and Accounts. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Naman Bagrecha of MK Global Financial Services. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vivin. Uh, good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome the management and thank them for this opportunity. Uh, I shall now hand over the call to the management for the opening remarks. Over to you, gentlemen. Uh, thank good you, evening. and and a very warm welcome to Berger Paints India Limited earnings call for Q3 FY23, and we really appreciate your participation. The management statement and the performance have already been uploaded in the website for your information. But before I hand over to our MD and CEO, Mr. Obhijit Roy, I would like to make a small disclaimer that questions should only be restricted to the quarter only. I now hand over to Mr. Obhijit Roy, our MD and CEO, for his comments on the performance. Thank you, Sujyoti, and good evening to all of you. Uh, I will take you through quickly through the presentation first and then, you know, look forward to the questions from your side. Uh, I hope, you know, you have received this presentation well in time and have gone through it, but just for the sake of repeating whatever has been put up there, the decorative business showed decent growth in the quarter in spite of extended monsoon, very high base effects and the short festive season compared to the corresponding quarter last year. The growth progressively improved with a double-digit growth in December. Every month we had some growth, but in December we had a double-digit growth. Some mixed impact on account of higher stocking of premium products by retailers on the back of steep price increases in the corresponding period last year and lower sale of exterior emulsion due to extended monsoon. On a YTD basis, decorated continued its healthy growth. If we look at the figures on a standalone basis, growth rate, this year, quarter three, the volume growth was 6.6%. Last year, it was 11.2%. And compounded three-year growth rate has been 15.3%, which is fairly healthy. Uh, in terms of the value growth for the same quarter, this year, we had a 7.2% standalone value growth. 21.2% uh, was the figure last year, and again on a three-year compounded basis, our growth rate has been a strong 17.2% in terms of value sales growth in the for quarter three. Uh, if we look at the YTD figure, the YTD this quarter, uh, so far uh, we have uh, a, a volume sales growth of about 17%, uh, uh, which is, you know, uh, and, and then last year, if you look at it, it was 27.5. Three years compounded is 15.9%. In value sales terms, 25.3% is this year's figure, 37.6% was last year, and three years compounded growth is 17.3%. So in terms of both volume value, whether you look at quarterly or in terms of the uh, YTD figures, the compounded growth rate is pretty strong. This quarter, it has been slightly on the lower side, and there are good reasons which we explained at the initial stage. Uh, and, and that is why the growth rate has been at around 7.2%. If you look at you know overall uh, what has been happening in terms of network expansion, uh, for the year, we have added 8,000 retail outlets and 4,300 color bank machines till date. 
we expect to you know close at about 6000 color bank machines by the end of the year and maybe around 10000 odd you know retail outlets which is beyond the machine counters we also add a few retailers on uh, for various other businesses that we have along with paint and and, and those are non machine counters which we will have about 4000 added in addition to the 6000 color bank machine construction chemical segment registered strong growth in the quarter and we expect to gain market share going by the industry growth trend so far and we are reasonably confident that we will add to the market share this year in terms of new product launches uh, we introduce one product for long life 15 which comes with a 15 year warranty with a new type of technology uh, this is for the exterior wall coating and we also introduce one coal tar based solution for rising dampness in used for new construction uh, this is popular you know down south and used for you know basements of new construction uh on the industrial business side gi and auto business showed good growth in this quarter protective and infrastructure business continued its double digit growth aided by infrastructure spending we continue a leadership position in this particular business line further price increases were realized in the quarter and powder coating business line had significant degrowth on account of lower sales to the fan industry so this uh, particular category you know a large dependence is there on the fan and there were some changes in rules in the fan industry which has really impacted us and uh, we went badly negative in powder coatings this quarter but things have you know revived in january onwards we are back to normal in terms of profitability uh, we we declined this quarter mainly on account of uh, four factors the primary factor is of course uh, the carrying stock finished goods and raw material which we were carrying of the pre prior period which is at a high cost due to capacity constraints you know which we had till we are now about to start the sandila factory from the 6th of feb uh, but till that point of time we normally built up the stock just before the season so in march we normally used to build up a stock and in september again we did the same thing so this time also we had built up the stock in order to be able to service the market fully in the season period this is a high cost inventory we anticipated a good festive season unfortunately rains continued you know for some time and then it didn't take off therefore to the extent that we would have loved the inventory lasted throughout october november december we got no benefit out of the actual price drops which have happened so that benefit is going to come only in the fourth quarter most of it and and almost all, all of it will start coming from only quarter 1 of next year but we will get a significant benefit in q4 but q3 we got zero benefit out of the rm price drop due to this reason mix impact on account of lower sales of exterior emulsions due to extended monsoon scale impact on overheads due to lower than anticipated growth in sales and there was a little bit of mark to market impact of exchange depreciation so all these four reasons combined to take it down to the level of minus 9.1 uh a minus 9.4 this quarter and and overall on a ytd basis though we are still growing at about 15.5% this year uh, but this quarter has been you know sort of a muted in terms of the profit growth it's negative and and largely due to as i mentioned the finished goods and raw material raw material carrying cost of high cost inventory but on the profitability front further softening of rutile monomer and solvent prices has been observed and that is likely to help us in quarter 4 and then going forward in quarter 1 onwards as well commencement of commercial production in sandila plant will also lead to lower inventory holding and working capital improvement as i mentioned we normally used to stock up because we had a issue as far as the total uh, capacity was concerned and our ability to service at the season time and therefore you know this will be taken care of uh, we are starting this from the 6th of february as i mentioned 
Mixed improvement likely in quarter four on the back of increased sales of exterior wall coatings and waterproofing items, which has high gross margin. Uh, we are starting this Sandila factory in Uttar Pradesh. Estimated outlay was more than 1,000 crores. The installed capacity is 33,000 uh, metric ton per month. Our existing capacity is about 60. To 63,000, so that adds up another 33. So we become 95,000 metric ton per month. This will suffice our requirements for the time being, you know, and therefore uh, it will help us. You know, we need not stock up and build up stock and before the season anymore. Uh, on the financial performance side, as I had mentioned, the standalone 7.2 percent with minus 9.4 percent. Uh, PBDIT, that growth of minus six. Uh, YTD basis, we are far healthier, of course. You know, at 25.3 percent in terms of sales growth, uh, and operating profit growth at 15.5 percent, and PAT growth also at 15.5 percent. Details of the uh, the raw material cost has gone up actually from 63.99 to 66. One eight percent. This is what has impacted our operating profit. If you see or observe, that's the line which has created all the impact. Otherwise, we have kept all of the costs under control, and uh, in fact, there has been some improvement in some of the other areas. But uh, overall, we went negative at in the operating profit side this quarter. Uh, YTD basis, we are growing at about twenty five point three percent. Again, you know, uh, there too, the material cost has actually gone up. Uh, but in spite of that, because of the strong sales growth, our operating profit growth is uh, there at about 15.5 percent, which is a healthy growth. Uh, but we could have done better at the, at the raw material to sales ratio would have been better. Income from operations growth standalone over the last few quarters has been shown. Uh, 24, 53, 96, 26, 21, 7.3. Again, 53.7, 22.5, 7.2. So these are, you know, COVID affected. Sometimes it goes up, but we have been more or less hovering at a pretty steady figure. Uh, if you see, most of them are in the 20s. You know, two quarters we are at the 7 percent range, and then two aberrations at 96 and 53.7 percent. On the gross margin. uh it had been uh, rising steadily up to quarter 4 of 21 from 40.2% to 42.3 43.7 and 43.8 and these were you know those years where those quarters were actually the rm prices had dropped to abnormally low levels so everyone benefited out of it since then you know it has uh, the prices have been going up you know we have been lagging behind in terms of passing on those price increases especially on the industrial side So uh, it has come down to about 37, 38 percent level. This quarter it has dropped to 38, 33.8. But I'm very confident that in Q4 it will again go back to this 37, 38 percent level, which is where you know we have been steadily been there right through uh, till you know these raw material prices have dropped or it has risen. You know, but we will go back to this 37, 38 percent gross margin level. Consolidated quarter three uh, figures is 5.6, which is lower than the 7.2 percent in the standalone which we saw, uh, and that's largely on account of you know three businesses which you know had you know uh, negative growth rates uh, this quarter. One is Nepal, which went very badly down. Uh, it was impacted by you know two three factors. One of them, of course, is the very high inflation there. uh then uh, there was this you know interest cost which has risen substantially uh and you know money flow had become a problem we took a conscious call not to extend credit into the market too much uh, that did impact our sale and we went negative therefore you know uh, substantial negative sales in nepal uh but we are back in january uh, they close on the 15th actually Uh, so that january 15th closer uh, we had an positive growth so we are back on to normalcy in nepal uh, and things are okay now uh, in bolix also we had a negative quarter uh, 
then Q3, largely because of the, uh, again, you know, similar Ukraine war is affecting Poland quite a lot. Uh, the inflation has gone through the roof, you know, uh, Europe situation is not good. And therefore, you know, uh, we had a negative uh, quarter, you know, in, in Poland. So the UK operations continue to grow. Uh, but Poland had, had a big negative and therefore overall it was a negative from Bullock. So these two pulled it down. Uh, the impact uh, has been, you know, about uh, though STP and other uh, companies did well uh, and grew well, uh, but because of these uh, two entities, you know, the growth came down from 7.2 to 5.6%. Uh, the PVDIT, obviously, because of the sales, lower sales growth also got impacted and it is minus 10.8 in this case. Consolidated, uh, if you look at it, you know, the sales growth is 23.6%, PVDIT at 13.6%. Uh, again, you know, uh, if you look at uh, the reason for it, primarily, you know, raw material to sales, you know, going up. Uh, in the case of consolidated, because of the value sales being slightly on the lower side as well, uh, this impacts you know on the other areas as you know, and, and hence there's a little bit of increase in the employee cost, but marginal. Uh, YTD basis, we are uh, at 23.6 percent growth in consolidated, and PVDIT growth of 13.6 percent is where we are as of December end 23. Again, if you look at, you know, over the quarters, how have we been sharing, more or less reflects the standalone performance, 24.9, 49.5, 93, 27, 28, 53.4, 20%, and now at 5.6%. Uh, I have already mentioned about, you know, the various performances of the subsidiaries. STP continue to grow well in sales and profit, and, and there's an all-around improvement there. Uh, Sabu coatings had a marginal degrowth in the top line. Uh, profitability improved on account of higher price realization and softening RM cost. Nepal had a large degrowth, as I mentioned, both in top line and profitability. Uh, and therefore, you know, there was a problem as far as Nepal is concerned, but back to normalcy now. Companies Polish subsidiary had a degrowth, both in top line and profitability, impacted by the Ukraine war and high inflation. Companies joint venture, Berger, Nippon Paint, Automatic Coatings had a strong improvement on top line and profitability aided by the growth in auto sector and cost improvements, which they have been working on diligently. Companies joint venture, Berger, Becker Coatings had a degrowth in top line and profitability. The outlook is, you know, brighter. Demand outlook looks uh, good in the coming quarter, which is in Q4. Mix improvement likely in the coming quarter, supported by increased sale of exterior coating. Industrial sales outlook remains strong on the back of upturn in auto sector and government spending in infrastructure. However, exchange depreciation on account of strong US dollar may be a concern. Thank you, and we can take the questions now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may kindly press star 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abnish Roy from Nuwama. Kindly proceed. Abhijit, uh, for the opportunity. My first question is on the gross margin uh, and the inventory raw material which you discussed. Uh, so, yes, I take your point. Uh, last three quarters, it has been stable in the 34 to 35% uh, range in terms of gross margin. And yes, we have seen the correction in titanium dioxide, uh, uh, definitely monomers and packaging costs, crude related. And Asian paints are almost 300 bits uh, improvement quarter on quarter. So I wanted to understand when you mean capacity constraint led to inventory built up, uh, what exactly happened? And in the future, if similar thing happens, uh, what improvement 
can prevent such a thing right avnish you know so uh, let me explain it to you you know uh, thanks for the question though uh, so you know we normally uh, we had a issue as far as the full capacity so you know what happens in the paint industry it's slightly seasonal and in the seasonal months the demand tends to move up substantially in non seasonal months however you know it sometimes you know it remains at a slightly lower level at a much lower level at time so typically in the months of april september and october uh, the demand tends to move up beyond the normal so if normal is 100 it can become you know 140 150 in these particular months so what happens therefore is we as a as a as a company we did not have the full capacity to service this 140 150 so we used to stock up material you know in the month of march and in the month of september august september in order to service the seasonal months requirement and then again you know uh, it will come down and then the factories will be able to uh, give the material as is required month, month on month so this build up resulted in some of these old price you know material in the month of july august the prices were on a much higher level So we were carrying this inventory at a much higher level, you know, and and that carried on right through till the month of December, which is why, you know, we did not get the advantage of the raw material price drops at all, and and that is what we are likely to get in Q4, which is why it delayed the gross margin expansion, which should have happened this quarter. So thanks, uh, I understood, uh, but in terms of say the best uh, industry practice. Say in terms of forward covers, or say in terms of uh, uh, better understanding, in the, because a lot of these are global raw materials. Uh, do you yeah. think uh, there is there is an area of improvement there, or was it that you thought maybe crude will go further up? So that time the call was taken, and calls can be uh, wrong or right in hindsight only. So is is that the issue, or there is an improvement area in terms of say forwards and say long term contracts better understanding uh, because. clearly the uh, market leader saw an improvement in the same same context so they have uh, yeah. been able to manage it better so wanted to so, understand you know, there, there there are two things here you know one you know sometimes it works in your favor sometimes it goes against you it is very difficult to predict whether the prices are going to drop or increase had it increased we would have been a gainer we would have actually shown a far better improvement market leader in this case right you know we got those advantages when the prices were going up you know and and then when the prices goes down you are on the reverse cycle uh, then you get caught on this issue uh, but we had no choice you know because uh, now with the lucknow plant coming up we need not build up the stock at all so that's an advantage you know which which we will have in terms of being able to play the game after that we need to take a call whether we feel that if the prices are going to go up we may still stock up if the prices are going to go down it may be a wrong call or a right call because it's very difficult to predict these things but we need not stock up out of compulsion now we had no choice but to stock up and that you know if the prices dropped because you know the prices did drop we were sufferers unnecessarily this quarter so yeah. uh, my second and last question is on the demand side yes uh, december double digit growth and i think market leader also saw good recovery in december So your question essentially is to would you be worried on the urban uh, slowdown which I think some of the other uh, non-paint but discretionary companies are pointing towards because there are uh, job losses say in IT sector startups and all that plus the high base which you are having on the last uh, two three years most quarters you have a high base. So I am not necessarily asking on Q4 but are you now a bit more sanguine that instead of say a high single digit or double digit volume growth in in the core paint Uh, we should now start building a bit lower in terms of our numbers because of these two reasons no i think we are quite confident and comfortably we can tell you that you know quarter 4 we will uh, possibly you know uh, reasonably you know unless something goes wrong seriously we should have a double digit growth rate both in volume and value terms in q4 okay and related question because now gross margins are improving Uh, so on the discounting by market leader earlier you pointed out some quarters there has been slightly more aggressive uh, behavior uh, yeah. I, as of now are you seeing that no so you know uh, there has been you know uh, this was an aberration which was there 
the previous year and in q2 and q3 specifically you know th- there was an unusual aggression uh, but that uh, is not there anymore so we are back to normal uh, you know rebating and normal structure uh, as it existed earlier in the paint industry Thanks, Abhijay. Thanks a lot and all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Kindly proceed. Hi, Abhijay. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I wanted to understand on the, uh, you know, firstly from a broader sense on the market scenario right now, we are going to see a huge capacity addition by many players. uh would you i mean given your experience would you be worried about this essentially hurting profitability in the near term because you have a new player also putting significant capacity addition so whether it is in profitability or return to fall how do you see this uh and if you could kind of give us your thoughts on the same yeah so we you know thank you for asking this you know because this has been coming up for the last few quarters you know still they come in and start actually operating in the market i think you know uh, repeating the same uh, question and the same answer possibly is not going to make any difference uh, so my view is has been you know that uh, the capacity addition uh, is not going to by itself result in a problem uh it, it has to be seen and observed you know what type of pricing po- price points they come with you know what do they do uh and and this is only one uh, addition which is coming there are many players who have expressed their interest to come in uh, and i don't think you know uh, that's very worrying for us uh yes you know one of these players you know is setting up you know large capacity now we we need to uh, see how it shapes up you know as i have already always said in any industry for that matter you know uh, it's it's and especially in this category like paint you know which is which has many other uh, claimants of you know actually the sale happens through various means right you know it is not only that you go direct to the consumer do something and you know you win the battle there is this you know dealer distributor you know then you have the painter then you have the interior decorator then you have the consumer and you have to get all of these aligned Uh, so i think you know it takes some time and effort uh, we are not unduly worried on this count uh, yes there will be competition we expect you know that you know there will be uh, some sort of you know effort from the party concerned uh, to improve their uh, sales and performance as well uh, so it will impact us but we are taking our own you know uh, whatever measures we need to take from our side and be better prepared for the battle ahead we don't see any major you know changes happening uh, it will be you know some change but that will be you know possibly if we are able to become more efficient uh, go more closer to the customer then i think you know we should be able to weather this very easily got it got it uh, second point was just on a near term comment you know you did allude towards confidence in fourth quarter uh, and i kind of uh, make that point but in jan are you also worried upon you know specific on the jan because it has been there has been a fair uh, mr mehta i'm sorry to interrupt sir you're not able to hear you clearly we are voice is breaking abhi oh oh i'm sorry is this better sir yeah this yeah, is much better okay sir uh, there has been a very aggressive winter this time and you know typically when it becomes so cold uh, you know exterior paint demand does take a hit uh, do you see that hurting not necessarily a yoy growth rate but and the demand trends will continue to remain weak even in fourth quarter because of that maybe from a pre covid levels because yoy i you i mean there is a base aspect that also works which is making it harder to kind of get an understanding so my question to you is from a 3 year cagr or from a pre covid lens uh, do you see the demand trends broadly you know now moving to a lower trajectory probably around at 12 13% out levels rather than the 15 uh, you know 17% plus that it were kind of doing thank you very much yeah so you know it's not only the winter you know there are lots of other factors you know which come into play the overall gdp growth you know how is the economy looking like uh, you know all, all these factors combined uh, 
and then the demand is very difficult to predict you know what will be but we have typically seen uh, that it is very closely linked to the gdp number you know it's about 1.5 1.6 times the gdp number so the overall economy uh, does well if suppose you know the winter is hard and as you were mentioning first of all that impacts you know the northern belt only you know the east the west and the south remains unaffected you know by harsh winter because you know there's really no winter in most parts of this uh, world and you know therefore it doesn't matter much uh, it's only in the northern part of it you know where the winter impacts you know substantially more so yes it will have some impact but you know as i said uh, you know not as much as you know one would have feared uh base of course uh, is one impact you know say because last quarter base was much higher this quarter base is more normalized so on that base normal base we should have a decent growth whether it will be 12% or 14% or 15% only time will say we expect that we will continue to you know grow at a faster pace than the industry is what we want to do you know and and for that uh we have our own measures in place we have our own plans in place and we hope that we will execute it successfully perfect perfect and just a bookkeeping could you give us the volume growth and decorative value growth in the quarter that's all from my side yeah so the i think i mentioned that you know but uh, just for you know repeating it uh, the volume growth that we had the value growth is 7.2% and the volume growth was 6.6% for the quarter thank you very much sir yeah thank you participants if you wish to ask a question kindly press star 1 the next question is from the line of jay kumar doshi from kotak kindly proceed sure uh hi abhijit thanks for the opportunity and thank you for comprehensive opening remarks i've got couple of questions the first one is uh it looks like since the last quarter you started gaining some share at least on a yoy basis you are growing faster than the market leader and especially quarter so in you know what segments or in which markets uh, you know do you see a visible market share gain and uh, is this trend uh, looking uh, you know sustainable right yeah you know uh, good evening you know uh, and uh, yes you are right that you know we have uh, this quarter's growth rate over the market leader uh, the gap has been uh, the highest in the last 17 quarters in fact uh, so therefore you know uh, the growth has been good uh, it's been you know across most categories i would say uh you know a little bit of improvement would have happened because i can't exactly pinpoint if there is any specific category i don't know frankly speaking uh but i think i presume that you know it will be across categories i don't i haven't seen anything any specific category in which we have done exceptionally well uh, but overall we have we have grown at a faster clip uh, whether it will be sustainable or not you know well time will say Uh, we hope so you know because that that's what we want to do that we want to uh, gain a little bit of market share uh, and and keep going at that understood uh, can you provide some color on how uh, your uh, sort of recent trends are in emulsion and uh, uh, you know a few years ago i mean the burger story was all about improving product mix and that product mix improvement translates into gross margin improvement and profitability we don't hear much about it anymore perhaps you know the focus has shifted to grass film and uh, other things but uh, can you just uh, provide some color on how uh, you know how you are seeing those trends yeah you know yeah, that's a good question you know in fact uh, focus is still there you know in, in order to improve uh, the mix uh, because that's something which we have to keep working on uh there is still some way to go uh, as far as the luxury category is concerned uh we are a relatively weaker player there we are we are present in a much stronger way in the premium luxury category which is midway between the premium and the luxury category in that we have two very strong brands called easy clean and anti dust and they continue to grow in spite of the intensification of competition there uh but in the luxury category 
uh, we wish we can grow faster you know uh, in the exterior luxury category we are doing much better in weather coat long life uh, brand you know we are doing relatively much better in in silk which is our interior luxury we can do better than what we are doing as of now uh, this is as far as the emulsion is concerned uh, the lower end emulsion which is weissen emulsion and walmaster uh, that continues to grow at a decent clip uh, so so that not you know something which is anything exceptional has happened it grows with the market as uh, you know as much as the market grows this all category also grows so this is uh, as far as the emulsions are concerned uh, i think you know overall uh, also in the same space if you look at it the waterproofing segment is also a relatively profitable segment uh, and we are doing uh, quite well and then that adds up to the profitability to some extent uh, again you know uh, overall this quarter was impacted but i think going forward you will see a restoration of the uh, gross margins level at the original levels where we were uh, thank you just one final one on that uh, look our understanding is that you've not been very aggressive on uh, selling patti and uh, yet when i look at your numbers the gap between volume and value is not any different from the market leader so uh, you know and when i i mean there is at least 7 8% pricing uh, increase in a yoi basis in december quarter so what explains this uh... Uh, hello yes yes hello so I'm, yes i i'm trying to yeah. understand i would have yeah, i've got, got your question uh, jay you know uh, let me explain you know actually there was a 3.8% approximate increase uh, in the price you know net price for the company per se because you know, i i can't give you the exact decorative figure or the industrial figure but the actual figure was only 3.8% increase which we should have got now instead of that we ended up getting about 0.6.7% there were two reasons for this one the exterior emulsion uh, category which is you know quite profitable has a good margin unfortunately in quarter 3 again you know did not do well because of the prolonged rain or monsoon which went on till 20th of october almost uh, and then the season ended because the diwali was early and so we did not get the impact that we should have got on the other hand last year there were price increases on exactly the same products the more profitable products the bases were much higher so we we suffered a double whammy in terms of the rain impacting the sales on top of it the base which is higher on these products because the price increases happened primarily on these products in last quarter so as a result of these two you know the exterior percentage exterior wall coating percentage came down so this impacted you know overall gap got reduced because of this uh, that's one reason for us the other of course the industrial uh, we could not pass on fully the price increases it, it keeps impacting our overall uh, profitability though we persisted with our effort we got some uh, towards december so that will impact us in this quarter you know so this is these are the two things which would have impacted thank you and the uh, uh, disclosures in the presentation on volume value stand alone that's essentially decorative business right or uh, is it at a stand alone level it is also this is, this is stand alone basis total so it does include some industrial component or what uh, understand it includes everything it includes industrial as well all right thank you so much and wish you the very best thank you participants if you wish to ask a question kindly press star 1 The next question is from the line of Anirudh Joshi from ICICI Securities. Kindly proceed. Yeah, uh, so thanks for the opportunity, uh, sir. Uh, where are you seeing the growth uh, higher in terms of uh, rural, urban, east, west, north, south? Uh, any region uh, where we are seeing the higher growth, and also probably we would have gained some share. So, have we gained share in any? part of india and uh, also uh, around uh, past three to four quarters there are some loss of market share in north india so has uh, 
uh, Burger regained that market share too. Yeah. Right. You know. So uh, coming to your first question, you know, where are we growing? You know, we are growing across uh, almost all regions. You know, uh, on a YTD basis, if you look at it, it's more or less across all regions. But uh, north, it still remains a bit of a concern for us. Uh, it's been mainly in east, west, and south. Uh, well, you know, we were relatively weaker in the west and the south. So uh, any performance there, you know, uh, on a on a lower base, the growth rate seems to be on the higher side. So that way, you know, the gains would have been higher in those locations. So uh, in the east has been consistently growing. Uh, we have a strong presence there, and we grow at a at a reasonably good pace. So not much of a problem as far as East is concerned. Not in certain pockets we are doing well. In certain other pockets we could have done much better. We are getting our house in order in in that you know in those a few states where we aren't doing all that great. One of them we have restored and and started performing reasonably well now already. And the other one the work is in progress and we are hoping that you know we should be able to streamline that state as well and and then. We should have a far better growth in the north as well. Okay, thank you. So, last question: uh, Can you uh, share the indicative breakup across uh, the subsegments of paints uh, and uh, putty as well as uh, waterproofing? The indicative number for two, three, or nine months uh, should be okay. Listen, I don't, I don't think I have those numbers, and if you know, I can share with you at this point of time, we. You know, for the nine months, you know, I have no clue. You know, but you know, normally, as far as the industry is concerned, you know, we have a uh, fairly, you know, representative. Uh, if you know the industry volumes or shares, we should be very close to those shares. Uh, except that, you know, in our case, maybe the luxury category will be slightly uh, lower than the uh, industry or the leader, uh, and it will be more oriented towards the. Premium and economy side. Okay, and uh, uh, lastly, uh, if we consider the putty waterproofing, all these products put together, uh, whether it will be upwards of fifteen percent of sales in standalone number? Yeah, it's very difficult to say exactly what is the percentage, you know. But I, I can assure you. that as far as you know uh, putty growth is concerned since you know that might be one of the questions you you would like to ask it has been a normal growth rate slightly above the normal growth rate you know so that as far as putty is concerned waterproofing growth rate in certain segments we have done much better in terms of the growth rate there so that's how you know i would place you know exact percentage what they are you know i can't comment at this stage okay Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shirish Pardeshi from Centrum Broking. Kindly proceed. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Abhijit. Uh, good evening. Uh, quickly, a uh, couple of questions. Uh, uh, when I look at uh, the trend in the market. and when we speak to channel what we are seeing specially <clears throat> in last quarter there was lot of down trading in the low end or economy emulsion now is that the case which is also visible in your numbers and that's why the the mix impact is also a little higher side no so i i explained that uh, actually what you were seeing it's not a down trading as such because you know the exterior luxury emulsion and the premium emulsion category which you know actually uh, sells in this quarter typically it is a very good sale because after the monsoon you know thin uh, exterior uh, painting happens and it's comfortable to paint as well the season is very good for exterior coating not materialize this year to that extent so you know uh, naturally the in, the other product kept selling uh, but this particular category sold less and as a result of that you will see uh that you know uh, the value realization you know per liter came down in this particular quarter so that's how it happened you know it's not as if you know the market has shifted or you know lot of down trading is happening 
those who can afford in pay you know typically they go for the right kind of products they don't mind buying the luxury products because at the end of the day you know they want to put up the better quality paint because labor cost is almost 50 60% so i, I don't think you know people will uh, tend to move downward just because you know uh, some paint cost has moved you know from say 4 rupees to 3 rupees 50 paise you know so uh, that's not you know how the shift happens for the paint part of it it is the labor part of it which is a bulk part 50 to 60% in bombay it may be even 70% so uh, it doesn't matter so much as far as the paint cost is concerned so there is no major downshift which happens we have never seen that trend happening yes there is some shift which can happen because you know uh, economically if people decide that okay instead of going for the luxury i might go for premium luxury or instead of premium luxury i might go for the premium that much of marginal shift might happen but it doesn't happen ki as if you know i am i was actually thinking of luxury and now i start buying the economy category it never happens like that. okay uh, that's helpful uh, my second question is on the project business of late we are seeing the project business is taking sharp momentum and that's where the local players are losing maybe on the pricing front because the builders lobby is also looking for the steady and maybe quality of the paints which is there this is visible at least when we speak to the channel partners so in your case if you can give some quantitative uh, and qualitative comments what the business means for you in the near term yeah so the project business you know uh, has been growing at a decent clip uh, of late uh, and and that's largely because you know many of these uh, buildings are coming up for completion and you know they need painting to be done uh, and so that is happening now and and uh, growth rate has been pretty steady uh, i won't uh, say it's you know very uh, buoyant as such you know but it's been slightly higher than the normal rate in so that if you look at it you know yes it's growing at a slightly higher clip uh, it's about 8 to 10% in terms of our total sales so it's not going to uh, create that much of an huge impact unless you know it starts really growing at a fantastic pace which is in the case as of now okay uh, my last question is on the uh, network expansion you mentioned that you will reach about plus 10000 stores uh, now when do you think this 10000 stores uh, will start contributing meaningfully to your uh, volume and value i mean is there any timeline that uh, it the scale up will happen within 6 months time or maybe a year time and when you add the network where do you start i mean is it that you start with exterior or is it you start with emulsions or you start with some low end products right so you know we are we are adding 10000 of which 6000 are uh, machine counters and the 4000 are non machine counters in the non machine counters typically it's it's the basic products we sell you know enamel distemper primer you know some amount of patti uh, little bit of you know white emulsion you know they take stainers and stain it so that's how it happens you know typically smaller shops who doesn't want to invest in the machine at this stage uh, and can become you know uh, machine uh, takers at a later date so that's about 4000 and these will you know these are small value uh, transactions which happen but some of them morph into machine dealers at a later date the 6000 machines that we uh, we plan to install of which 4300 odd we have already installed these are good counters they start from day one across the basic it depends on location to location where you are positioned if it is up and bihar it behaves differently if it is a uh, kerala it behaves totally differently they use very high end you know premium luxury paint as well so it depends on the state where we are right but mostly whatever is the you know full range of products we sell uh, in those states uh, these machine counters will start off with these full range that is how it happens in our case also this is the same trend so let me let me have little more on that to get the little more depth so to reach uh, say uh, 150 to 200 kl per month for these machine outlets is sufficient for you to say 6 to 8 months time or they start with uh, a month first itself you mean 150 to 200 liters or 
scale what are you saying i, I don't litter, understand litter litter sorry uh, litter right you know so so they start with you know probably uh, start slow and and depends on the size of the dealer counter as well right you know so if it is a big dealer counter in which we have managed to enter we may start with a much higher volume right at the beginning right if it is a smaller dealer he will you know start with a smaller volume so it, it depends on what type of dealer you have got into and you know what is his profile if he's got a very good footfall if he's got a good contractor base if he's got you know architect connections he may start with a slightly higher volume it also depends on how he places you in his counter it sometimes may be that you are a second bet and he feels that you know he needs a good company and he may give you due importance sometimes he might be the fourth entrant in his counter in which case he will give you only little bit of space maybe one or two products only which he will sell which he likes okay. so it depends on lot of these factors it's very difficult to quantify you know exactly what will happen and this is what is going to repeat itself in across counters it varies from counter to counter okay. thank you abhijit and uh, thanks for your patience and all the best thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, kindly press star one. The next question is from the line of Ajay Thakur from Anand Rati Securities. Kindly proceed. Hello, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, just had uh, two questions. One was on the industrial and the auto paid seg- paid segment. Uh, just wanted to understand how the growth has been trending in both the segments. and also can you just uh, give some color in terms of the margin performance in both the segment i understand that obviously you have been sitting on a high cost inventory but if we were to adjust for that can we expect uh, you know a margin of this segments actually being uh, you know improved to at least near pre covid level kind of a uh, you know a margins yeah so uh, as far as the industrial business we have you know three broad lines uh, automotive and general industries you know protective coatings and powder coatings uh, so the powder coating segment you know as i mentioned is de growing in our case and need not be for others you know but for us you know because we are slightly dependent on the fan industry uh, for our sales in powder coatings and that there were some issues with the fan they were changing some norms in star ratings were coming in their stock production for almost you know two months and therefore the sales have been impacted uh, the profit in the case of powder coating remains stable as far as protective coatings is concerned uh, the sales growth has been good we are the leader there infrastructure spends are very high now by the government you know also in this budget as well capex spend has gone up substantially so we are you know looking forward to con- this good growth continuing in the future as the margin however is a bit squeezed here uh, it hasn't gone back to the covid days if we will, even if we adjust for the uh, raw material uh, and then finish good stock you know which we had carried forward it will still be marginally below uh, the pre covid period Uh, because the full extent of the raw material price increases have not been passed on in the industrial section whether it is auto gi or protective coating okay and so secondly i uh, just want to understand on the uh, growth uh, how it has been in tier 1 versus the tier 2 tier 3 towns uh, some color on that front so we've been growing reasonably well in both these markets you know so far uh, both the urban market we don't look at it you know from that we look at it urban and non urban you know and all our depot towns we consider as urban including the major cities uh, so uh, from that perspective you know more or less the growth rates have been uh, on equal terms uh, no great significant uh, difference that we could see between the two thanks sir that's uh, that's from my side thank you thank you participants if you wish to ask a question kindly press star 1 has there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you you know for uh, all of you for coming and you know participating in this session i, I hope uh, you were you know uh, 
whatever questions you had we were able to answer those satisfactorily uh, wish you all a very good health and uh, meet you again in the next quarter and thank you thank you on behalf you. of mk global financial services that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your